Uh, hi, this is Tak Chulun Tianat from the Southeast Asia program at Cornell University. I think I, I'm last because of my seniority, <laughs> which is just me an easy way out because most of you have covered all the important uh, issues uh, involved in this protest. So my short presentation would be more personal. Um, and uh, I represent the older generation. Okay, um, I have a confession to make. I've never thought that in my lifetime, I would have witnessed the bravery of young people who presented their 10 demands to modernize and democratize the Thai mon monarchy. I watched this unfold when listening to Kun Rung reading the 10 demands at the August 10, 2020 demonstrations. I was shocked, proud, ashamed, and fearful. I was shocked that the demands were made publicly, calling attention to the fact that the monarchy is still a major factor in Thai politics and hindering democratization. A lot of us have thought about it, but nobody dared say it in public. I was proud of the bravery of the young students at this time, including secondary school students and all the various gendered groups that Tamara had mentioned. This is new. I was ashamed that I had lacked the courage to say publicly my own thoughts about the Thai monarchy, even though you probably know I had written about it at the beginning of my professional career. I and many others of my generation had fallen prey to self-censorship that kept us from articulating what was on our minds. I and my fellow colleagues of this generation failed to speak truth to power. I'm fearful that there may be violent reprisals because calls for the reform of the monarchy affects the political legitimacy of the military, an institution which we have not touched upon. Allow me to reiterate briefly what the students wanted. And some of you have already um, showed us why this is important. They wanted the article 1112 to be revoked. They wanted to return the separation of the monarch's personal wealth and those of the crown property. They wanted the king not to express political opinions. And lastly, they wanted the king, uh, they warned that the king should not endorse future coup d'etat, or coup, coups d'etat. I always get this mixed up. Um, the young demonstrators were reacting to what they have experience under the rule of King Wachiralongkorn. The demands, however, created a dilemma for conservative royalists of a different generation who have adored and worshiped King Pumipon. The older generation sees him as the ideal type of a Thai monarch, and they are unsure about how to reconcile the differences between the two kings. The young protesters, on the other hand, know what they want, a modern monarch who will protect democracy, but their conservative elders are still in a quandary. Um, the differences between the two monarchs are quite stark. And at this point, I don't think I need to, to uh, bring them out. But I wanted to, um, look at the most recent difference, and that is commencements at, at universities. You know, in Thailand, most graduates um, during the, the time of King Humipun look forward to receiving their diplomas from the king and having their pictures taken because these fo photos are displayed uh, prominently in their houses. Today or next week, 
there would be another commencement at Tamasat University, October 30 and 31st. Only about half or less than half of the graduates have attended the, uh, you know, the, the rehearsal, which means that if you don't attend the, the rehearsal, you cannot participate uh, in the ceremony. Instead, graduates took pictures of the themselves receiving <clears throat> their diplomas from cutouts, cutout figures of Ajahn Poe and Ajahn Somsak, Jim, who is now in exile. <clears throat> and as a real rebuke to the king, some of them took pictures receiving their diplomas from Bernard. Those of you who are not at Tamasat may not know Bernard, but Bernard is an Indian immigrant who has been selling peanuts and all kinds of nuts huh, at the Tapachan campus. You know, so he's a fixture. And the students were receiving uh, their diplomas, taking pictures with Bernard. Uh, lastly, about the, the differences, which I want to, um, to bring up, is that you know, when people talk about King Bumipon, they always, they always go back to his remark right after he became king. And um, his remark was that I shall reign with righteousness, something which the current king also uh, repeated. However, King Wichararingon is now ridiculed by his praise of a supporter who he, he met at one of his public events. Uh, and he said, Kla mak, king mak, kop chai. right? Uh, which means that you know uh, you're very brave, uh, you're very good, very accomplished. Thank you. Now, this this pr phrase is now repeated on loudspeakers during protests. Especially, I heard this at the protest uh, in front of the German embassy, and it's repeated over and over and over, which shows real disregard for the king, right? And because less majestic law is somewhat suspended, nobody has been arrested for that. How to deal with the young people demand is problematic for conservative royalists of my generation. The attempts to incite royalist yellow shirts have failed thus far. Attacks on the young people as enemies of the monarchy working to overthrow the monarchy um, has fallen mostly on deaf ears. Most interesting reaction from this generation of people who venerated King Bumipon is a group that I saw um, on the internet holding a banner proclaiming we love our father's institute now, Paul, of course, you know, is King Kumipon, right? Towards the end of his death, um, he was referred as Paul. This could be interpreted as a rebuke again to the current king and a call for a restoration of King Kumipon's idea of the monarchy. Already, I read recently a prominent and vocal businessman. I'm not sure whether you, you, you saw that post, but he came out clearly to say that the way out of this um, conflict is that the Thai monarchy should return to the way King Pumipon left it. I want to um, end my, my short presentation here with the following observations. And some of this has really come up, come out um, by, by some of your comments. If the students' protests, um, if their protests should last and be effective, it must gain more support. And some of you already showed that there is international support and you know and things like that. Secondly, how how will the king react? It is very strange that there's been no real reactions from the king, as if it doesn't doesn't appear to be any real conflict. He has, he has um, stepped up his public appearances during the Katin 
um, ceremonies at certain temples, but, but not much else. And most importantly, how will the military react now that its basis of legitimacy has been weakened or is being, is being weakened? Thus far, only the police and border police um, uh, troops have been used, have been deployed against the protesters. You don't see the army coming out yet. I would like to end by reading Paul Chambers' uh, poignant and sobering reminder. I'm sure those of you are aware of Paul Chambers' very um, interesting and thorough analysis of the recent promotions in the military, which was published in the New Mandala on, let's see, September 20, 21st, 2020. If you have not seen it, you should look at it. It's very interesting of his analysis of the military. I, I quote his conclusion, which is quite telling. And I quote, the country's crisis in 2020 is not only a showdown between students and arch royalist aristocrats. It is also a pivotal flashpoint where the military is becoming increasingly disunited most of its leadership in 2020 is composed of more reactionary officers willing to squash student demonstrations. Thailand today continues to proceed, proceed down the dark tunnel of charade democratic semi-autocracy, a path which will likely witness some form of military repression in the near future before there can occur any widening of political space. This is kind of a very pessimistic look, but there's a good chance because if you look at the new army commander, um, he's very he's chosen by the king. And um, those of you who follow military, Thai military politics, it is one of the strangest <laughs> uh, military in the world. Every time you have a new army commander in chief comes up, his first speech is the the primary goal of the army is to protect the throne, not the nation, not people, not democracy. It is the throne because its legitimacy is based on the king. So I hate to, to end our meeting on this rather dark and pessimistic note, but it's, it's real. Thank you.